Welcome back to Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku and I'm in my van right now. We are going to head up to Washington today and we're going to meet up with uh, some of the guys from Addicted Fishing and go fish for some salmon. And it's going to take us a couple days to drive up there. But before we do, uh, I got to stop by the city in San Francisco to uh, I'm going to get some new solar panels. Uh, we're just going to do like a little upgrade on some solar panels. So we'll stop by there. Back to unshaded. Unshaded, we're about. That's pretty good, 244, yep. 245. Toss on one shader. Okay. Now let's see what it goes. That basically knocks out a panel. 138 now. Took it down about 100 watts. Toss on another one. Down to about 50 watts. But you lose a lot of power as you can see. So note that um, I have two panels of 175 watts. So 350 watts total, and we're going to be putting on uh, three 100 watt panels. So Optimal's technology solves two big problems. The first one is this uh, disproportionate effect of shading on the solar panels, uh, where parts of the panel get cut off by the bypass diodes in these panels and don't produce power anymore, even if it's a little bit shaded. Um, the other big problem is uh, something you can't see with your eyes here, but if we had a thermal camera, we could also see the cells heating up, and that actually causes these panels to fail prematurely. Um, so optimal technology keeps the output proportional to the amount of light hitting the panel, and prevents that early failure by preventing that heat from getting generated. So this solar company is called Optival, and they are our sponsor for this video, and they're going to hook us up with these solar panels so we can, you know, have even more efficiency in the van. Um, so let's get, get to installing. I'm gonna be helping them put it up there too. Okay, we're getting there. We got everything all aligned and uh, we just have to bolt them down. A little bit different orientation than I had it before. I just wanted to keep that fan area clear. Uh, before I had taller brackets so the fan could still open up. It, it didn't open all the way but it could still open up. But with this way I can open it completely so it's actually a little bit better. It's not bolted in yet but we're doing a little running a little test making sure everything's working properly. Right now we're looking at about 222 watts and the sun is a little bit lower than when we started. Uh, but let's see let's do go ahead and cover. Still getting 195. Two panels covered. 183. 180. Yeah, you can definitely see that it's, you know, it's dropping just a little bit. Whereas before it was, when you cover one panel, it dropped about 100 watts. So if I shade, you know, shade the cell a little bit, even this shaded cell is still pulling some power. So the technology is in the in the box on the back of the panel right there. Uh, that's where our electronics live. Uh, we design and build the panel to work best with our technology as well. All right, well, all we need to do is bolt it down and we're good to go. So we got our solar panels all installed up there. Uh, looks great. And I'm glad with this upgrade because we do find ourselves a lot of times under trees and campgrounds and uh, wherever we are. So it's good to be charging, still be able to charge in those situations. Um, now we found ourselves, uh, we drove a few hours and then now we're uh, found this lake. So we're gonna stop here for the night and uh, we're gonna make some dinner. See like even with this place, a ton of trees that, that would be covering the solar panels. Anyways, I'm gonna make some little simmered Japanese style dinner tonight. Just like a little comfort style food uh, in Japan. Just little simmer vegetables. I have denkon. This is a lotus root <laughs> almost almost forgot in english and i got daikon 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 we got some thinly sliced meat so we'll just toss that in there and call it dinner i'm making some rice as well all right got my hex clad get a little oil in honestly i love having the solar power it gives us unlimited range
And I got my MSG of choice, Hondashi. I got some dried shiitake mushrooms as well. And I love that Optival is changing the game. They're up in the game by creating the world's first solar panels that work in the shade. My lotus roots in. Got my daikon as well. Okay, that looks beautiful. Let's just cover it up. Simmer for about 20 minutes. If you're interested in learning more about Optivolt, I'll leave a link in the description below. And maybe save this video if you're thinking about solar panels, but if you're not sure yet, so you can come back and still use that link. I put some meat in there, forgot to record that part. Everything looks good. Once again, hex clad. Bring the heat, getting the job done. <laughs> if you're interested in one of those, uh, I got a link in the description, check it out. Simmered Japanese dish. Mm. Ah, Anyways, we're gonna finish this up and tomorrow we'll be meeting up with Marlin. All right, guys, we are here. Jocelyn just getting ready, brushing her teeth. Um, Marlin is launching the boat right now, so we gotta go meet up with him on the, uh, on the ramp. Oh, there's a lot of boats out here. There you go. Oh yeah. Ready. Day in paradise. Heck yeah. Ready man. Yeah. Hey, what's up Mike? Mike. Taku. Taku, nice to meet you. Hey Marlin. <laughs> what's up bro? <laughs> nice to meet you too, man. Crack. This is the big show, dude. This is gnarly, dude. There's dude, so many boats. Wait till we get down here, dude. It gets crazy. <laughs> no, man. I'm standing in my truck and all I do is hear it, bud. Alright, guys. We're going to start fishing here. We are now in the Columbia River, it's the river that separates Oregon and Washington, and I'm excited to get some salmon. Since salmon fishing has been closed in California, I feel like it uh, oh, should man. be even better up here, so without you know getting intercepted down there. So how deep is this? We're 50, 50 right now. 50 feet. Yeah. Are you fishing pretty close to the bottom? Yeah, right Probably. now. So what's gonna happen is yeah. I think we're still slightly outgoing right now even though we shouldn't be yeah but i can just tell because i'm only doing point five up river yeah and then eventually it should start it coming in and then those fish should suspend all right once it starts coming in but usually when it's outgoing they, they yeah. suck down right to the bottom oh and then you just need to touch a couple of the rods <laughs> give them a little a blessing <laughs> <laughs> yeah not when I troll though. It's only no, for casting. Oh yeah. Looking. No, uh, even so, <laughs> I think it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> so, so you know how many times I've told the story of when we were on the Wilson and you floated through there, bobber down, bobber down, bobber down, and like yeah, nine that was times so in a row, insane. and then Nick goes through there once and just yeah, like nothing. <laughs> yeah, that was insane. Sometimes, like, it's like just a matter of getting into those schools that, like. And you can catch all your fish in 10 minutes. Yeah, crazy. Why do you have, what's that, tuna? Yeah. So we got super baits. I'll show you. I think you already put one out. But it's like a bait that you open up. Oh, yeah. You can put tuna on the inside. Oh, right on. Sam, Sam would love that tuna and oil. Look at all these boats in here. It's pretty crazy. Dozens of boats out. Oh my gosh, so many. All right, so far we've seen um, about four fish that were caught, so out of all these boats, only four so far, but Marlon thinks right now the bite's about to turn on because the tide is about to change. Real, real, real. He was there too. Not there, is he? No, he's not there. Oh, we had a bite. Oh, bite. Oh, that was a biter. All right, I missed that bite on camera, I think, but this one got hit. Popped off uh, almost immediately. It's Marlin hand to me. I never really felt it <laughs> on there. Oh. Moily tuna. 
then that thing just closes. Oh, that's it's cool. It's got the little rubber band that goes over the top. Yeah, dude, if you don't fish these down for salmon where you're at, I know uh -huh. you can't fish right now, but you should because Dang, these, yeah, freaking, never tried that. these work good, dude. Called a Brad's Super Bait. All right, Brad. Come on, fish. Come on, fish. Give us some love. Get this, son. Gosh, come, on. come on, baby, come on, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. Oh, 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 there you go. There it is. <laughs> hey, that's a good one, too. Hatchery, too. Hatchery. Hatchery hole. Nice, dude. <gasps> yeah. yeah, we worked for that one. Yeah. Where's that bottle? That is a nice, that's a, nice that's a nice one. Yeah, that's the a last big. Time, last time. Dude, bonus. Dude. bonus. All right, guys, we've been fishing all morning, and uh, it is now 11:45, and we finally, finally got one. Finally landed one. Nice coho. <laughs> it has been a struggle today, guys. <laughs> it has been a struggle. Glad we got one on the board. Break the skunk, and now time to catch more. Real windy now. It went from this, like looking like this, to being like four times this size, like that. Like to always does that. Dude, it went from like all of a sudden it was like. Hey yo! Let him fight if he wants to run, okay? Yeah. 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 Ye
Mayo and she also made a delicious salsa as well and I even oven baked some fish, some, uh, one fillet of salmon and a rockfish. But most of them I did a beer batter and fried them up and in the beer batter I put in all-purpose flour, beer obviously, and I season it with some salt, uh, smoked paprika, and some onion powder. Kept it real kind of a little bit more runny so the texture of the batter when it came out of that fryer was nice and crispy and light and delicious. Oh, you know what? I do need that baking tray. I'm gonna put <laughs> this uh, finished uh, fish on there. Thank you. <laughs> it's like it's hard. Like fried sturgeon is pretty unbelievable. I know. I love fried sturgeon. Like, like it smells so good. You can smell it like all the way over here. This hex clad wok, like I said before, handles the frying so well. Fried to perfection. If you guys are interested in uh, the hex clad, I got a link for you guys down below. Something I haven't done is deep fried salmon. And I always love eating salmon raw and smoked. You know, those are like the two go to ways for salmon. Um, I might do like a pan sear, but never have I deep fried it better and deep fried and we tried it with some of this salmon um, and it I have to say that was probably the best fish on that spread it, out of the halibut rockfish sturgeon the f deep fried salmon was delicious I've never done that before but I would actually highly recommend it some might say it's a waste to deep fry but it came out so juicy and succulent just because of that real fatty content in there Salsa. Yeah, it's like a homemade salsa. <laughs> that one too? Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, all of them are salsa or pickled aioli. What's that? Yeah. I don't think it's like that. These are all homemade salsa? Yeah. They got spice to them? Yes. Mm -hmm. How much? Um, I don't think it's that. I'm all alone. I'm all alone. <laughs> <laughs> it's a seven. Amazingly delicious meal. I can't wait to eat it. Looks good. This pico, this pico I can rock with. Money. Money. Mmm. Delicious. Mm. It was a lot of fun hanging out with everybody, especially Marlon from Addicted Fishing. If you haven't seen Addicted Fishing, go and check them out. I love their videos. Really high quality, educational, and a lot of fun to watch as well. And just epic fishing. These guys just know how to fish and they'll teach you how to fish as well. So if that interests you, make sure to check them out. I'll leave a link in the description. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Peace.